Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session, How Salesforce Transforms Work and Productivity Using Slack, or as, li or as I like to call it, the Salesforce on Slack session. We're going to be talking a lot about how Salesforce has become a successful customer zero of Slack, and we're going to share a lot about the journey along the way uh, and all of, the, all of the lessons that we've learned so that you can take them into your organization and figure out how to be very successful with Slack. Before we dive in, I wanna make sure that I have an opportunity to share with you our forward-looking statement, which basically says that if you are currently thinking about making a purchasing decision, you should do that with currently available product and information. And with that, let's dive in. My name is Becca Krass. I am the Senior Director of Go-To-Market Operations here at Slack. And with me is Andy White, who's the SVP of Business Technology at Salesforce. Andy, would you like to share a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure. Um, I am happy to present here today with Becca and excited to share some of the journey that we've been on and what we've learned and what we wish we would have known as it relates to Salesforce and Slack. Uh, I've been at Salesforce for 13 years, and my team is responsible for the enterprise technologies that are used across the, across the entire company. Awesome. Thank you. And for me, I've got 10 years under my belt at Salesforce and about 10 months under my belt at Slack. And so we're very excited to be able to share with you uh, some of the things that we've learned along the way. So with that, here we go. We're going to take you in the next 30 minutes or so through the Salesforce on Slack journey. We're going to start at the beginning because all good stories have a good beginning. And we're going to check in with the lessons that we learned and some of the things that uh, were real eye openers for us along the way. Next, we're going to talk more about the apps and automation that is the true superpower of Slack at Salesforce, what it is that we're doing to bring work into our digital headquarters. And then we're going to talk about connection and what the true transformation of work looks like at Salesforce uh, and why that's so powerful. Let's start with the beginning. One of the things that's important to understand is that there is truly a cost to context switching and that it adds up. And when we talk about context switching as an individual employee, we're talking about shifting between applications, we're talking about shifting between all of your tabs uh, from your browser, if that's how you're interacting with all of your systems and data. But the, the data shows that most individual employees lose up to about five total weeks in a year of just moving between applications. And that's a lot of wasted time. Uh, that's about 10% of an employee's total time in a year that they're working, where they're just switching. And when we think about what it is that we can do to make that easier, that's where the real power of having a digital headquarters comes in. So when we say Slack is your digital headquarters, what we really mean is that this is where you can connect all of your conversations, all of your automation, and all of your apps into one experience. And let's give you some examples so that that, can, that makes a little more sense. Um, the first is when we think about what happens at work, we think about human events. These are the things that the people in your organization need to take care of, whether they're getting PTO approved, or if they're in sales, asking somebody to take a look at the deal that they're in, um, or getting access to folks on the product side. This is, this is what the human side of your business needs. The challenge is that to be able to su successfully accomplish all of those needs, they need to tap into all of the systems. And one of the things that we heard uh, Mark and Brett talk about in our opening keynote here at Dreamforce is that the average enterprise has about 986 different applications that they are using to try to run their business. And for the employee to need to understand, well, first I got to go into this system and then into this system and then into this system to do all of that. That's where a lot of that wasted time and the context switching comes from. The power of a digital headquarters like Slack is in bringing the human events and the system events into an engagement layer inside of that digital headquarters. So from the employee's perspective, they know that all they have to do is go to Slack, go to their digital headquarters to take care of all of the needs that they have as humans and connect to all of those systems where all of that business process powers your business. Being able to bring these things together inside of your digital headquarters is a game changer for organizations that drive incredible productivity through this automation. However, 
this is a really big mindset shift. And word to the wise, one of the things that I think we underestimated at Salesforce was how big of a mindset shift that that would be. Um, and what it is, what it means is that we really need to focus on how the work moves forward and gets done with your teams in Slack. Because if Slack is, you know, the room where it happens, where the game is played, where the sausage gets made, being able to make that room really transparent and helping everybody to embrace that transparency from you know, our frontline employees all the way up to our most senior executives, that was a really big shift. Um, the other thing about Slack that I think can get lost a little bit is that the true power of Slack is it gives each individual the opportunity to focus their time and attention and make the most of their most valuable asset, which is their time. And there are a lot of tips and tricks that we needed to share along the way to help people get better at focusing their time and attention in Slack and also to teach them how to be mindful of others. So as an example, you know, I, I've been in the working world for a couple of decades and you know, one of the things I learned over time was how to be successful by calling everybody together in a meeting or by sending the email. And it was a real shift to be able to think through, well, how do I focus the progress that I'm making at work using clips um, and using huddles and using all of the features of Slack, including just channels that are super transparent to drive work forward more effectively. It's a different skill set and it really is a mindset shift. The other piece that is really a game changer is the ability to automate and accelerate work inside of Slack. Um, and we're going to spend a lot more time on that in this session, but it's a really different way of thinking about what does it mean to be effective, efficient, productive at work is to be able to automate all of those things. Um, and that accessibility of that automation goes all the way through business technology with Andy and his team, um, you know, to me as an individual non-technical person, being able to build a workflow that makes my job faster, more efficient, um, and helps my team move the work forward. It's a, it's, a, it's a significant set of tools that are at my disposal as a user. What's great, although all of that might sound very daunting, is that changing how we work truly dr does drive results and drive productivity in our organization. Um, I just want to share a little bit of the data that we have internally at Salesforce about our use of Slack as a tool. Um, one of the things I talk about sometimes is the huddle. And a huddle inside of Slack is the opportunity to very quickly huddle, um, to gather everybody together quickly to be able to have a, a short, probably unscheduled conversation to quickly drive clarity, get everybody on the same page and move forward. So um, you can do that directly inside of Slack, either in a direct message or a multiple person direct message or in a channel, which is where I find it most useful. Um, and with our ability to quickly huddle, to sort of recreate what I would think of as like a hallway conversation to make sure that you've got clarity and alignment, it's changing the way work is getting done at Salesforce. You know, the average length of a huddle at Salesforce is approximately 15 minutes. And it means that we're moving away from everything being a 30 minute meeting and, and requiring that um, and towards very quickly being able to align and make sure that we're moving in the same direction and the results sort of speak for themselves. I know, Andy, you love to talk about this data too. Do you want to add anything? Yeah, totally. Uh, so a couple couple quick notes. 37% uh, of all of our internal uh, video and audio collaboration is huddles. And this is without any huge adoption push. Uh, there has been no corporate messaging from my team of like, let's get on huddles. Let's use our own products. It's been organic growth. And the people watching may be thinking, well, what's that big blip in the middle? Is that a mistake in your data? And it's not. Um, and we've seen tremendous growth in huddles. And I'm going to talk about that blip later on in my section. But um, it's pretty meaningful nugget of information as we think about how do we enable people on Slack. Absolutely. The other piece of how powerful it is in terms of changing how we work to drive productivity is we're seeing a true cultural shift, and Andy alluded to it, from emails and meetings in terms of how we get the work done 
more towards workflow and automation. And that's saving everybody a ton of time. So one of the things that's incredible about this data is that we're seeing the volume of email that we're sending as an organization coming way down, 42% down from the previous year. That's insane, especially when you think about the fact that Salesforce as an organization has grown tremendously in that time. You would expect that number to go up um, or at least maintain a steady state, but for that, for that to go down that significantly, I mean, that's, that's just incredible. The other piece that we're seeing is that other people are getting in the mix on this ability to automate through workflow. The number of active workflows that we're seeing, which are built by, like I said, people such as myself that are not deeply technical, is driving work and more productivity out of every person. And so we're seeing all of that increase really organically, which is terrific. Plus, and Andy, I know you were alluding to this too, the number of actual meetings that we have and we use Google Meet internally for a lot of our meetings is going down quite significantly. 16% um, from last year, like that's a ton of time that is being released for employees to really do the best work of their lives. So it's changed the way that we think about Slack. Slack is truly the center of our digital headquarters and we're connecting all of these things into it. And when we think about our purpose going forward, what we're seeing is that there are three key pillars of this transformation for us. The first is we're we are improving our employee experience where employees have the opportunity to thrive and do their best work from wherever they might be. We have employees that are still remote. We have employees that are working in a hybrid model where they're going to the office sometimes and working from home sometimes. And we have employees that have decided, you know, the office is the place to be. Wherever our employees are, we wanna make sure that the work that they're doing is being delivered in a place where it's truly transparent and accessible for everybody. And for us to do that, we need to make sure the employee experience of our digital HQ is top notch. The second piece is that we're driving this productivity increase through collaboration, automation, and data-driven decision-making. So we're using Slack and Tableau as our foundations. All of the data you just saw about huddles and email, all of that is coming from a Tableau dashboard that we have to track our usage. And when we're increasing our productivity like that, the fundamental goal is truly to improve our operational effectiveness. So we are reducing how long it takes for, for us to do things that are pretty standard across our organization while we're still maintaining our priority around trust and security. So that is what it means for us to make Slack the center of our digital headquarters. And now I'd like to hand it over to Andy because he's going to be able to talk a little bit more in depth about the apps and the automation that we're bringing into our environment here at Salesforce. So Andy, take it away. Thanks, Becca. So we really took a step back and said, uh, how are we going to enable the entire enterprise? Because we call IT at Salesforce BT, so you may hear me refer to that interchangeably, uh, or business technology, but we didn't want IT to be a bottleneck. We wanted them to be an enabler. We wanted them to be incredibly familiar with the business units that we're trying to support and help them on this journey. Um, because we deeply believe that there's problems in all of our teams that can be solved excellently and in those three categories with Slack. And so we thought about how can we enable everyone to be successful and come alongside with them and help them run at full speed. And so one of the first things that we did was focus on enablement. And we created a program, which Becca is one of our, our captains. And so each business unit like marketing and sales and legal and finance um, and so on have a captain. And that person is really responsible for standing up and saying, these are the opportunities that I see for how we can transition our work and move our work into Slack and solve business problems. And so they really help with prioritization and identifying those opportunities and, and working through them. We also have something that we call champions, um, which are people that are passionate advocates for Slack throughout the enterprise. And they're the ones that help with training and enablement and answer questions and stay very engaged um, in Slack and in those, in, in those business units. We also recognize that it's super important that our executives lead by example and that we focus on how are we giving them training and enablement um, so that they're not feeling overwhelmed, so they're, they're not struggling with how to use the tool, but they can really lead from the front. And so we created this channel called Slack Academy, and 
Uh, it's full of resources. It's full of things that people are doing out of the box. It's full of things that are people are doing with advanced workflows. We highlight new capabilities and talk about how to use them and what's going well and what's going right. Becca has been highlighted with some of her thought leadership. Uh, and so we really try to help people feel comfortable in Slack and know how to use it well. Next up, we provided a uh, Center for Enablement, and that's our C4E team. And we use that group as a way to help support all of the business units with their ideas and the art of the possible. How, what can be done in Slack? Um, what could they leverage and reuse that's already been done? So we're also providing best practices, human interface guidelines, reusable components. Uh, and then that feeds into what we call our center of excellence. And this is the team that builds our enterprise apps to be used across Salesforce. And we get a lot of the feedback from our business units and from the C4E around what are the problems that we want to solve. So when Slack came into Salesforce, they joined my organization. And um, what we call this next section is that ops and apps and automation are better together. And uh, part of the reason I believe that they're better together is because Salesforce and Slack are better together. And when that team joined my organization, um, a cross-functional group of people that joined Salesforce and people that joined Slack uh, came together and said, how can we solve problems across the enterprise? And how can we learn from all the good work that the Slack team has been doing since the inception of Slack, because they run everything on Slack. So who better to learn from? Um, so I'm gonna focus on three key areas as, as we talk about these examples. Um, certainly going to be talking about end user experience and how we can improve that. I'm also going to be talking about how you can do this without going to custom code. And um, you can really start with out of the box capability and low code, no code solutions, which is what Becca was talking about. It actually reminds me of the old access databases that some of you may, may remember and be aware of, uh, where it was this, you know, if you knew how to use access, it was an incredibly powerful tool, but it was running on someone's desktop. And if that person left the company or if that desktop crashed, it was like this huge black hole that IT didn't know about and wasn't backed up. And so that's where the low code, no code automations in Slack are so powerful because it's like your own access database. You have tons of capabilities, but it's safe, it's secure, it's within the boundaries of the company and it's running in Slack. So let's jump into our approach. The first thing that we did was start with an application that we call Concierge. Concierge already existed. It's a web portal that you go to at Salesforce and you ask questions. So it's similar to a hotel and you say like, hey, I need a dinner recommendation, but here it's help at work. Um, I would like to know what our benefit schedule is. How much time off do I get? Um, I need help uh, with my paternity leave. I need help with IT. I would like to understand what's going on with my mobile device or I'm having trouble with this or when am I eligible for an upgrade? You can ask it anything and it'll give you an answer. So we wanted to start there because this is an application that every employee at Salesforce uses. So we brought it to Slack and that meant that they didn't have to context switch to go and ask those questions. They can do it right within Slack, either within the application or within any channel. Um, but we also, if we can't immediately give them the information that they need so that they can self-serve, they can initiate a ticket, either with IT or with uh, HR. And now they can engage back and forth with their technician directly in Slack, again, without having to leave. So it really speeds up that process. So Concierge was our first app. Our next app was approvals. And uh, we think that this is a problem that every enterprise has, but it's definitely a problem that Salesforce has where uh, trying to take a step back and thinking about the flow of work and, and what can we do differently with Slack than we have been able to do in the past. And we built a smart event-driven API-driven application that can contact any of our systems of record that have an approval API associated with them. And we can pull it into Slack. And we started with expenses. We actually, our second use case behind expenses was um, acquiring companies. So now when our executive team decides we're going to acquire a company, that approval flow 100% goes through Slack. And that's, that's where it, it takes place. Um, we're bringing in all of our other systems of record like our HRIS system and our um, purchasing system, anything that needs an approval. And what's remarkable, and the proof is always in the pudding with the data, we have seen uh, the expense approvals or denials, as our CFO might wanna see some of those denials, uh, go from two days to two hours. And we believe that we will see the same, if not more, of an increase as we bring more and more um, approvals into the approvals app. Next up, Midas. And uh, there's a separate session that you can watch on this that's called uh, Slack on Slack Accelerating Deal Cycles with Custom Apps. Midas, or the Midas Touch as this app is called, is a secret weapon and a superpower for the Slack sales team. 
you can ask this bot um, to tell you how is your customer doing? So you could pick, let's pick on Ford since we showcased them a lot at Dreamforce this year. You could say, I wanna know how the European Ford account is doing. And if you're part of that team and you have access to that data, it's going to come back in the application and tell you right there, this is their consumption, this is their usage, this is what they're doing well, this is what they're not doing well. And then it also creates a beautiful slide deck with relevant information that they can bring to their customer and sit down in a meeting with them and go over their areas of success and opportunity. It's incredible and it saves so much time. And all of that is automated. No one, no human doing anything in that flow. Uh, over 25,000 hours saved and we cannot wait to bring this to Salesforce. We're really excited about all the improvements that are gonna come with it. We talked about how uh, it's important to manage the environment in Slack and really reduce the noise. And there's times where we want to increase the volume of some messages than others. And these next two apps help us do that. One of the things that we realized from our Slack partners is that there is absolutely a need to communicate across the enterprise from different teams and with different voices. So one of the things that we're working on is enabling those teams to have their own bots, but do it in a way where there's consistent voice that's in alignment with our brand and where it's not overwhelming. Um, and so things like a benefits bot or a legal bot or an IT bot, so that you can say, hey, this is something we really wanted to make sure you're aware of, or a Dreamforce bot. It's a way that we can in brand communicate at scale, either to individuals one on one or in channel. It's really powerful. I just got my first uh, BT notification bot today, which was really cool to see. Uh, and it's a new way of thinking about how can we engage and communicate at scale. On behalf of is a application that we built that enables our executives to have their trusted partners like their chiefs of staff or their EA or their communications partner, if they have one, be able to send messages on their behalf. So the executive is always involved in that process of reviewing what the information was and uh, making sure that it, they're aligned with it and that it, it comes from their own voice. But this team can make sure that it's formatted right that it's time to go at the right at the right time, especially with complex communication, where maybe we want to have an announcement from Mark and Brett hit at the exact same time, and then we want Brian Millen to go a little bit later. This gives us the ability to do that and still have it come from those executives instead of a you know, generic Salesforce bot, which is what it would be if we used Amplify to do it. I think that that'll really help. And I, I said before, excited about Task Hub, but I, I said before, it's really important that the executives lead from the front and lead by example. So we talked about approvals before. So an approval is something that is really targeted toward managers. Um, there are some approval workflows that don't hit managers, but most of them, that's the use case. Tasks are something that everyone has to do. And these are the things that you're required to do that someone's probably tracking, um, that someone's probably bugging you about, like, hey, don't you care about um, re refreshing your V2 mom or being compliant legally with requirements for working in the state of California? Um, and Task Hub will do that for them. And so you have one central place that you can go to to know everything that you need to do at Salesforce. And sometimes you can action it right in Slack. That's obviously better. Sometimes we, we uh, bounce you out to the source of record <clears throat> so that you can complete it there. Um, but the next iterations of this, uh, it'll remind you and it'll give visibility to your manager of what you need to do and what their organization needs to do. Because what we ultimately want is for people uh, to know what they need to do and be able to do it without having to be reminded or followed up on and uh, that we can cut all that waste out of the system. And this is absolutely a pain point for me, knowing what I need to do and having to search multiple places to do it is just incredibly inefficient. So those are the custom apps. Now I wanna show you uh, and really kind of tell you about a journey that we've had with our TechForce team. And TechForce is what we call our front end end user support. And uh, they started a journey of saying, we wanna move our work to Slack. And so what I'm gonna show you today is how that evolved over time and how we started with no code workflow and then moved that into much more complex uh, over time. So give me one second while I pull that up. It's such a great story. And it's so exciting just before we go into the demo, it's so exciting to see the things that your business technology team is building, the apps that you're building inside of Slack um, that are just gonna drive productivity for everybody. Like I'm personally very excited about them. It's pretty remarkable uh, and, and I'm excited for sure too. Um, okay, so this is the channel. And what I wanna start with is call your attention to this workflow area uh, at the bottom. So that's that little plus with the lightning bolt. 
And when you click that, we're going to say request TechForce help. And then I'm going to pick an option and say, you know, I'm having trouble with my Mac. The latest update broke my Bluetooth. And then I'll select my VPN. And then we say, do not interact with any of the emojis placed on your thread, as this will affect your case's progress. And I'll talk about what that means. Normally, I would click Submit, but I want to show you one that's already here. So in this case, this user said that their account was locked on their Mac. And so the very first thing that happens, this channel is being monitored by a team of technicians. And when this came in, one of them responded with this lifesaver emoji. And when they did that, it triggered a Reacti. And a Reacti is a workflow that's based off of the emoji that you applied. And so in this case, our TechForce team has developed a couple dozen of Reactis and this is the one that they do when it's assigned to the user. This was triggered by the lifesaver and it tells them who their technician is and it thanks them and sets expectations that we'll be back in 30 minutes or less and work with them. And then they have back and forth here and the technician realizes, okay, you need help with your Mac recovery key. So they respond with this recovery Mac emoji, which triggers this workflow react -G. And it tells the user exactly what they need to do and the next steps of what needs to happen. And this is actually a multi-step workflow. And so when they're ready to go to the next step, they can click this button. And this is really powerful because sometimes when you're providing support, there's something that the user needs to do and there's something the technician needs to do. And maybe there's a bit of back and forth, but this can really help it go smoothly and as quickly as possible. So then when the issue was resolved, the technician responded with the green checkbox saying the ticket is closed. In our first version of this, um, which everything I just showed you is out of the box capability, no code. Uh, at the end of the month, we would export all of this data to a Google Sheet and we would import it back into Service Cloud because we still wanted to have our metrics and trends and we didn't want to lose sight of that. Now let's talk about version two. So now in version two, this little icon gets applied right away. And you can see in the emoji order, it was actually applied before uh, the technician replied and said, I owned it because this gets applied right away by concierge. And concierge creates a ticket for the employee uh, in Service Cloud. And that's where that ticket is right there. And when the technician responded with that emoji, the lifesaver emoji, it assigned the ticket to them. And when they closed it, it closed the ticket. So what's so powerful about this is everything on the back end is transpiring in Service Cloud, which is our system of record. But everything on the front end was in Slack and neither the employee or the technician had to leave Slack to do this work. And the thing that's even more powerful about this is that, um, actually I'll show it because it's gonna be on a slide that Becca's gonna, gonna show up next. So I'll hold on that, I'll hold on the data. I'll, I'll keep you waiting. Um, so the next evolution of this is we're gonna front end this uh, with a bot and we're gonna leverage natural language processing in AI and ML so that people can just ask their questions. And the bot will respond with our relevant knowledge articles. We believe 90% of the issues that come into here for help can be resolved by the bot. I also wanna call out that we have not highlighted um, this in any way, shape or form publicly across Salesforce and there's already 19,000 people in this channel. It's pretty remarkable. So let's switch back to the slides and I can talk about the data and why that is um, so important. So what that top blue line is saying through our normal ticketing process of submitting through concierge, it takes us 27 hours to resolve those tickets. And that number has improved since we moved it, concierge into Slack, but 27 hours is still far too long. Now I'm gonna ignore phone and live chat for now and jump down to Slack. And it says that it takes less than 30 minutes on average for us to resolve an issue in Slack. That's remarkable. So from 27 hours to 30 minutes. And the reason is because we're meeting the employee where they're at. As soon as they submit that, we respond. And I cannot wait to tell you the story when we have this front ended by a bot and take it to the next level. And also, this is just a prototype for IT. That's part of why we haven't announced this more broadly. We think that this applies to every group across the organization that's providing any kind of employee support. It's an incredible story. You know, when when I think about what that future is going to look like, it's it's very bright. So I'm excited. Yeah, and it's hitting on those three boxes that you, or those, those three pillars that you talked about, right? Improved employee experience, improved scale, improved operational effectiveness. Um, it's, it's really remarkable. So now let's talk about connection because the other thing that I underestimated when I was looking at purchasing Slack, which I think is another good tidbit of information, we purchased Slack 
at the product before we purchase select the company. Um, and one of the things that, that was talked about by the account team with me was connection and how Slack would drive connection at Salesforce. And we're seeing that. So let me tell you a story. Uh, this year, FY23 company kickoff, we use Slack heavily. This isn't the best picture, but what you can see is that Slack is in the room. There was 5,000 employees in that room, which was the biggest event we had done post pandemic. But that means that there was another 65,000, 70,000 that weren't there. Um, and one of the standout moments for me uh, and I wasn't present at CKO. I was remote, like the other 65,000. Uh, that there's always jokes about uh, Mark's shoes. He always has shoes that are blinged up and you know just pretty silly. Um, and someone took a picture of it and posted it. And someone that wasn't in the room turned that into a meme. And when that hit into this thread, the entire room erupted with laughter. And it really stuck to me of like, we've, we've crossed over a line here because Slack being in the room connected all of us that weren't there in a more meaningful way. And that blip in the data that Becca showed earlier for, for huddles was because of CKO. We used clips and huddles heavily throughout the event and around the event. And because we were modeling how these technologies could be used well and the impact they could have, we saw huge adoption from them. So one of the important lessons we learned from this um, is the importance of modeling in Slack and showing what can be. So that was company kickoff. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how I use Slack to drive connection and visibility and good work within my team. Uh, one of the things we do is ask people to share about themselves. And so it's a, it's, a, um, it's a series that we have called Give Me Five, where you answer five questions about what you do, what you like to do, what you like to do outside of work, and then typically share some photos and thread. And what you can see is that there's emoji responses, there's comments, there's back and forth. It's a great way to connect people that may never work together because they're in different departments or may never see each other because they're in different countries. It's a great way to drive connection. The next, um, I've got employee survey. One of the things that we do at Salesforce is we, we take a this employee survey two times a year. And in that, um, some of the data said that my team has signs of burnout and um, they're comfortable stepping away from their work, they're comfortable telling their manager, hey, I, you know, I'm feeling burnt out, but it's still there. So what can we do about it? So what we've asked is for people who are thriving in how they're balancing work and life to share, to tell stories. And so this is a team member that's in, um, that's in Dublin and she's sharing about her trip to Tanzania and how they served the poor and built them shelters and did some amazing work. She went with her whole family. And then there's a thread of people talking and engaging and it's across the globe. And we're all learning from each other and getting better together. And it's, it's really remarkable to see this happen. And last but not least, I use clips to engage with my team. I share what's on my mind. I share what I'm reading. I share sometimes jokes from my kids and uh, photos. So, you know, I'll do a summary of my time at Dreamforce at the end of this month and talk about how amazing it was to meet Becca in person and how privileged I am to be talking to you all today. Um, but Slack truly drives connection uh, at scale, and it, I underestimated this, and that's something to watch out for. So I talked a lot about the custom apps that we built. I talked a lot about workflows, but I want to make sure that you don't jump to custom apps, that your focus right out of the gate should be, what can I use with the investment I already have? Uh, Becca showed a slide earlier that talked about all of the system interactions. Those are all legit examples of, of systems that integrate well with Slack. And you need to make sure that you're taking advantage of those capabilities first and consuming the out-of-the-box capabilities. Salesforce, as you've seen through Dreamforce, is heavily focused on its out-of-the-box capabilities with Slack and how Slack and Salesforce coming together on all of our properties. While we are the number one sales cloud, we are the number one service cloud, we are the number one analytics product, um, that bringing those together and consuming those capabilities can really drive results. And just a handful of those I shared but we also have these results from our customers that sales productivity increases by 28%, customer loyalty increases by 15%, that they can optimize their go-to-market efforts and their marketing campaigns by 16%. And I really, really think that we're just getting started and just scratching the surface. I'm gonna hand it back to Becca and she's gonna close us out and talk about what some of our other customers are doing and give you some information. 
Absolutely. You know, the, the digital headquarters truly does drive business impact, not just at Salesforce, although we definitely shared a lot about what we're doing at Salesforce with you today, um, but in these big businesses around the world. And a lot of that time saving is happening because of automation. Teams are becoming dramatically more productive. And we're really excited that our, our customers that invest in their digital headquarters with Slack see a positive ROI on that investment in 10 months or less. Most of them do. Um, and so much of that is because a digital headquarters is so much more than just chat and video. It's all of this automation. It's all of this ability to bring work into where it's happening. And so they've, there have been a lot of opportunities to explore the digital headquarters at Dreamforce. Um, we had what we call the Slack Canopy in Moscone West on the third floor, where we've had demos absolutely packed to the gills with meet the experts, uh, people who are learning more about how to bring the power of Slack into their use of Salesforce um, and vice versa, which has been really exciting. We also have a special offer for Salesforce customers who can get started today with their digital headquarters. Whether you're in the enterprise or uh, a growing business, you have the opportunity to take advantage of this. Um, I did wanna ask uh, or open up to a couple of questions, um, Andy, for you, and, and maybe you've got one for me uh, before we close out. But I get my question for you is, you know, what, what do you wish you would have known before you started on this Slack journey? Uh, you know, I know you're a, you're a big command K person, but you, you've recently come to that. So, you know, what do you, what do you wish you would have known? Yeah. So command K is definitely my uh, favorite shortcut in Slack. If you don't know that uh, command K on Mac and control K on a PC, it's fantastic and really helps you focus on what's most important, but we said it multiple times. Uh, it's really a culture cultural transformation and thinking about how you work differently. And I really underestimated it. It was much more of a technology and tools play for me and thinking about how can I enable the entire enterprise to have less silos and to have better communication. But it really wasn't about rethinking the flow of work. And that's that's what I, I wish I would have known. And what we're doing now of thinking about how can our work flow better? How can we not apply our organizational silos and our technology silos to our approach on work. Um, and it's really remarkable because Slack gives us that, you know, frame or canvas for lack of a better word um, to really be more efficient. And um, I have the privilege to uh, present to our executive team every couple months on this, like, how are we doing on Slack? Like, that's kind of the, the question everybody asks. And the, um, the topic that came up this last time is we, we really underestimated the cultural impact of what bringing our work into Slack would be and how good and positive it is, but also hard, you know, and, and intentional and really meaningful. So I would have spent more time on that, on the change aspects of implementing a technological tool. Good use of the word canvas there, by the way, I really like that. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Couldn't be more excited about canvas, by the way. I'm so excited to see how uh, Quip and Slack are coming together inside of Slack. Um, so Becca, my question for you, and it's a question that um, I think gets asked a lot about when you're working differently, what are the new ways of work that you've found for staying organized in Slack? Because it's not, there's not a one for one uh, comparison. It's not, it's not email, it's not Teams or Google chat, like it's, it's very different. A great question. It's a question I get a lot as a Slack business captain, actually. Um, so, you know, I obviously try to keep my Slack neat and tidy. I put some time on my calendar every week to like clean my room, just the, just the same way I would have cleaned my desk or, um, you know, made a to-do list at the end of the week. I want to set some time for that. Um, but specifically staying organized in Slack with making sure that I'm keeping track of all of the things I need to focus on. Uh, there's a few um, capabilities inside of the product that are super helpful, uh, depending on what works for you. So one suggestion is to save things. Um, so anytime you see a thread or a post or anything, you, you actually can save it to your saved items, um, which works as sort of a running list of things to do. Um, but I've heard of some people want to use their saved items on like, things they want to refer back to versus a to-do list. So the other way to do that, or one of the other ways to do that is to direct message yourself. One of the things that I really like in Slack is I can, you know, share the thread or share 
um, share a post or just write myself a note about something that I need to do. And so my direct message to myself turns into a running to-do list to make sure that I've crossed everything off. Um, and you know, I can delete my message to myself or I can li literally just use the strike through to cross it out to know that I've gotten it done. Um, but my, uh, my role and responsibility spans a lot of different things. Um, so I actually picked an emoji. Uh, it's a dancing penguin emoji uh, that nobody really uses, uh, or at least I haven't seen it used very often. And I use the command K or the search functionality to be able to search all of Slack by my use of this specific emoji. And it you know, it searches all of Slack. And when I'm done, I can remove that emoji and put on a different one to let people know, yes, I've, I've handled it and it's all done. So that there's a lot of different ways to stay organized in Slack. You can pick one that works for you and try it out. Um, and then you can make adjustments based on exactly what it is that you'd like to do. So that's uh, so great. I'm going to have to look for that emoji now. Um, and confuse you by You'll starting be able to, to see my to-do list, Andy. I've just told yeah. my <laughs> you did. Uh, the other thing I would add is that um, I, I find that depending on what I'm working on, I'll have frequent like canned responses where I'm saying the same thing to a lot of people. Like right now, it's why aren't you using our new next generation VPN? And here's the spiel why and how you can get started. And so that's something that I message to myself. And then I create a folder uh, at the top of my canned messages, <laughs> which link to that individual message. So I can go back to it and find, okay, where's the VPN? Um, I find that to be really helpful as well. Yeah, there's some neat hacks that you can use in Slack to make yourself as an individual more productive and thinking about how to scale that is just, it's really exciting. Anyway, thank you, Andy, for your time. It's been great. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us on this recording. Um, and I hope we get a chance to meet you in person, either at a Salesforce event or a Slack event in the future. Thanks. Thanks everyone.